empty day, empty 12, sorry. <laughs> Today we are going to talk a little bit about the customer, and this is going to be um, a fairly short video, um, but it's very important. So, of course, now that we're designing collections, we have to think about who we are create, creating these collections for. And as a designer, we always have to kind of remember that we are not designing for ourselves, although it would be very nice if we were. Uh, but we are designing for a customer, so someone else that is going to be wearing our clothing um, and that is going that we're going to want to be enticed by our clothing. So the best way to do this is to sort of understand our customer a little bit better. So when we're designing, we know that what we're designing um, is going to line up with what they want. So there's a few different things that we can look at to sort of better get to know our customer. So let's take a look at them. So people use clothing to define who they are. And people use clothing not only to define who they are in certain situations, but that situation can differ. So think about, you know, the types of clothing that you would wear, you know, to visit your grandma or to go to church or um, versus the clothing that you would wear, you know, to go out and, to a party with your friends or to go to a bar. Um, versus the clothing that you might wear to work or to a job interview or um, to a very important sort of professional meeting. Um, they're all very different, of course, because we are all very different. We're not sort of one thing, uh, so to speak. Uh, we're different things in different situations. And to sort of help delineate those different separations, we have different clothing. Now, we of course have different personality traits that will carry over into all of these different sections, but it's important for us to remember that people are trying to communicate a story about themselves when they're wearing clothing. Um, and us as designers need to be able to pick up on what type of story the customer wants to tell. We talked a little bit about that before with um, satisfying psychological needs of our customers. But, of course, there's lots of different things that will affect the sort of overall style that a customer needs. And, of course, occasion is one of them. Um, but other things as well. And, and those other things will sort of influence every different um, aspect of a customer's wardrobe. So a person will have different styles of clothing in their wardrobe for different occasions at different price points. And we talked about that before. We might have... Um, a lower price point for clothing that we don't need to perform that well, um, very casual clothing, sort of stay-at-home clothing um, that goes to all the way spectrumed up to formal clothing that a lot of people will see us in that we need to perform very well. Um, so when we're thinking about our customer and how we're designing for them, we want to think about what occasion specifically we're designing for the customer because this will affect price point and it will also affect style. Again, it's not our job to design um, for all occasions for our customer, uh, but to focus on one factor in that customer's life and design for that. Now you might say, well, why can't I just design something for all occasions? Well, remember that we like to make things special by making them different than everything else. So if I were to say, here's a garment, you can lie on your couch on it, you can go to a wedding, you can go on a date, you can go to church, you can do all these things in this outfit. Well, then it's not appropriate really for any of those occasions. Um, simply because we have different occasions for different, or different clothing for different occasions, makes those outfits special for that. Um, if I can wear something on the couch and then also to a job interview, it's probably not going to be that comfortable, and it's also not going to be that appropriate for my job interview. Um, and this could be true both, you know, visually, um, but also psychologically. So when we put on you know, that interview outfit or that, that, you know, outfit for the first day of school. I know we didn't get it this year, but, um, um, or to go to the job. We're sort of preparing ourselves psychologically and also everyone else around us. Um, this is me now. This is work me. This is professional me. This is academic me. Um, it's a little story that we're telling, again, not only to everybody else, but also to ourselves. And it's much more convincing when we have something different and separate 
that we can do that for with. Um, so having the same outfit applied to many different occasions is very difficult and it decreases the effectiveness of that outfit to put us in the right headspace. So who is your customer? And again, this is sort of what we're asking when we design our collections. Um, what makes a customer? What's their persona? Um, and we sort of look at all these different aspects of a customer and all these different things can influence what they wear. And this would be um, across all occasions and price points. So again, even though where a customer is going to be wearing our clothing for, what occasion is going to influence how we design, this is going to influence every sort of thing that they wear. Um, so if they have a preference for color or if they have a preference for how their clothing is made or they have, uh, you know, they like simple design or they like complex design or they tend to like to look a little bit sexier and cuter or trendier, um, that's going to sort of bleed into every single um, little category for dress for them. So t let's take a look at a few of them. So politics, causes, and values can be a very important influencer on how people dress and what they like to sort of present to the world. So um, if a customer feels strongly about a political party, a cause, or a certain value, it will likely affect how they dress. Now, this can be very, very obvious you know with this they can you know especially today we tend to wear our political opinions um, on our shirts or on bumper stickers or I know that's not clothing but it's the same sort of thing um, hats different things like that so it can be very very kind of obvious and cut and dry you know you look like a certain politician you put it on your shirt um, but this can bleed into other areas so if you are eco-friendly or if you're concerned about um, pollution and uh, being wasteful of materials, um, you might look for garments that are made from recycled materials, um, made with fair labor practices, uh, things like that. And that doesn't go so much go into style as it, it goes into um, uh, how they're made. Um, but of course, we can bleed that into sort of certain design uh, because a lot of people like to be vocal about their causes I mean, some people more than others um, and again that's up to your customer if there's someone who really finds their cause um, not so much important but has a strong desire to communicate their cause or their politics or their values with others they are certainly going to wear them on their clothes um, someone who might still strongly feel a certain way but doesn't want to be so vocal might not. And again, that depends on your customer and their sort of preferences and how they dress and how they communicate uh, their politics, causes, and values. Now, again, I just want to mention too, this doesn't have to be quite so cut and dry. These are some very, very cut and dry um, examples. Um, of sort of politics and causes right on the shirts, but this can sort of bleed in. So it's different sort of um, walks of politics or walks of causes might have a specific style to them um, that's a little bit more subtle and not quite so in your face. Uh, and those are a little bit more easy to adopt. They're harder to sort of point out. You need a little bit more of a discerning eye. It's not so obvious. Um, but those are actually more likely to be adopted by customers that adopt those uh, politics, causes, or values because they're easier to wear. Uh, they're not quite so maybe confrontational or in your face, but they're sort of little signals um, that certain groups will sort of style themselves as and use as a little bit of a signal to say, hey, you know, I sort of align this way. Age. Age is a huge factor um, um, when it comes to customers uh, and designers must consider it. Although it might seem like a designer should design for all ages, again, just like when we talked about occasions, um, older people have different priorities for dress and so do young people. Young people want to look young. Older people want to look maybe uh, more mature and sophisticated. Um, so these two different sort of aspects require that the age groups 
uh, dress differently, simply to signify a difference between them. If everyone to, was to dress the same, no one could dress quote-unquote young, or no one could quote-unquote uh, dress sophisticated or mature. Um, so again, this is why we want to sort of differentiate our designs. We can't just say, oh, we design for all ages, or oh, we design for everybody. Um, we want to specify our designs because that will create a stronger and more significant connection to our customers. Most young people don't want to dress like they are older, and most older people don't want to dress like they are younger. And age can influence many other factors, like price point, style, and construction. So how do you dress for an age? So again, very um, in general, um, younger people will tend to dress a little sexier, show a little bit more skin, be a little bit more risky um, in their design choices, uh, tend to go with sort of more changing fads that are things that are in and then out, um, sort of flash in the pan flads, um, whereas older customers will tend to stick to more traditionally classic designs, uh, show a little less skin, be a little less risky in their garments, um, also in quality. So uh, again, along with sort of quick changing fads, younger people might not invest in quality clothing because they'll have it one season, they'll get something new the next season because it's not really meant to stick around. Whereas older customers that invest in more classic long running trends will invest in higher quality clothing that will last them more seasons. They will not just simply get rid of it at the end of the season. Music, music and any sort of other hobby or sort of cultural leaning, and this could be, you know, not just music, I'm using music as a um, sort of overall arching, but we can um, put a lot of different things in this category, anything that might inspire a sort of style or mode of dress. Um, uh, you can sort of think of it even as sort of all these little sort of subcultures or countercultures um, are very, very popular when it comes to developing their own style, developing their own fashions to sort of signify, I like this, you know, and again, this bleeds out um, a little bit further than just music, um, but music is a really great example of that. You can think of people who are really into a specific style of music, they might dress a certain way. Um, in addition, musicians have long been fashion influencers, and many people have their own clothing lines as well today, many musicians. Uh, and the type of music that a person likes to listen to can definitely affect how they choose to dress, especially for their kind of more social aspects of their, uh, you know, wardrobe sections. Hobbies, too. So um, this bleeds out. Hobbies can influence a customer's wardrobe. Sometimes special clothing is needed or preferred for a specific hobby. Sometimes a customer just wants to signal their interest in a specific hobby. So um, here we have various sort of different hobbies, whether um, they can be interests. So watching sport, I don't know, I guess you can consider it a hobby, um, but it's also an interest. So people are trying to sort of signal um, what they're into. And again, that's sort of what we use clothing for. We use it as a sort of signal to other people, hey, this is a little story about myself. So our hobbies and interests obviously bleed into that category, no matter what it is, whether it's sports or um, kind of video games or pop culture, um, whether it's yoga or hiking, um, whatever it's going to be, we're going to try to sort of even consciously or subconsciously incorporate those elements into our dress to sort of add to that little story about ourselves. Profession, of course. So a customer's profession may require them to wear a certain type of style of clothing to their work. This will influence a whole section of a customer's wardrobe. Now, of course, we might wear much many uh, different things. Uh, so the clothing that we wear to work may be very different from where we were, uh, what we wear outside of work. But again, our sort of overarching sort of preferences will bleed into it. But also what our job is will influence what we uh, wear. So if, you know, we have a very high power job, we might have to get that power suit in there. You might have to have a very sort of restricted, uh, very formal, very sort of, you know, power um, indicating outfits, again, like the suits and things like that. Um, if we have another job, maybe like a, uh, 
a high schooler or or elementary school teacher or even maybe like something like a psychiatrist you might some want something a little bit more more like still professional of course um you know appropriate but something a little bit more warmer something a little bit more approachable something a little less intimidating than the power suit um and then of course we might have something like you know this is the every you know Williamsburg you know uh, uh, bar they have to have the vest and the tweed tie and the silly hat um, but that's again it's sort of dressing the part of uh, you know your sort of hipster bar or whatever else so if you have to be trendy in a certain location you have to look the part I mean he's certainly you know with this um, outfit looks the part of that sort of you know hipstery bartender um, so again having clothing that makes us look the part is almost required for certain um, professions it not only sort of makes us sit in there but it even can potentially help us do our job better um, so again your customer where they work and what they need these clothing to do and sort of communicate um, can make a big uh, uh, influence and that, that especially goes to if you're designing specifically for um, a, a customer in the workplace so if you're doing work clothing what job do they have what are they looking out of these clothes what is it looking to communicate to um, customers or people around them is it I'm powerful um, I'm approachable um, I'm trendy. You know, all these different things we have to sort of communicate. And last, we have geographic location and religion. So those are sort of tied because we can see um, prominent religions sometimes in different locations, but of course they sort of bleed out. There's a lot of overlap. Um, but where a person is from culturally slash what religion they are can influence their individual tastes and how they dress. Um, and this can include styles that are identified by tradition uh, and religion that are specific to a certain culture. So again, you know, uh, we have to think about where our customer lives, where we're going to be selling these clothes uh, to. And we'll see that on global brands that sell all over the world. They'll tweak their offerings, their designs. Um, to specific geographic locations because something that might be very popular in Tokyo might not be very popular um, in New York or something that is very popular um, in Lagos might not be very popular in Bogota um, you know so on and so forth uh, because of course we'll have all these different sort of cultural traditions and varying tastes based on geographic location and again that can be um, influenced very much by religion because a lot of times religion will have certain requirements for dress and things like that so think about where your customer is from where you're going to be selling to so on and so forth um, okay so I hope that was helpful to sort of give you a little bit of an idea of what to think about when you're designing for your customer um, and again, remember, we are designing for our customer. Um, it's also good just as a kind of just to wrap this up to not make your customer, let's say, too unique. Um, remember, we as designers want to sell our lines. And although we kind of think about our target customer as an individual, um, we're hoping to sell our clothing to more than one person. Yes. So we want it to be accessible to sort of larger groups of people. So even though we think about one sort of quote unquote target customer, that should be a representative of a much sort of larger group of people that kind of um, lean toward that style, that, that aesthetic, that personality, so on and so forth. Again, and that's simply just because we want our clothes to sell. So if we get too narrow, um, with our customer base, we run into the danger of potentially designing for too narrow a slice of the population. And so we won't um, be able to sell enough to stay in business. So we do want to have our customers represent a fairly large swath of the population, at least enough to keep us in business. All right, guys. 
Um, I'm going to do one more bonus video this week too, so check it out. Um, it's going to just be a little bit more on flats, uh, how to do shadows and things like that, and so hopefully it'll be helpful to you. But I will see you then. Bye-bye.